Yo, what's up? I'm now sitting in an MG4 51 kilowatt hour LFP battery and in this video I'm going to talk about well LFP batteries versus the cobalt batteries so uh, yeah uh, I just finished the Doi Ankang run which is the steep hill uh, test and uh, it was very uh, interesting and quite surprising how this car performs so oh you'll be like oh how was it how was it well if you want to know how it was you have to wait a couple of days and then you can watch the video and see what happened yeah so um yeah but okay in this video uh, i haven't had any of these uh, rambling videos in a while now so uh, it was actually based on a um, a thai follower or actually fan they, they they call it fc fan club he asked me during a live stream like hey bjorn uh, or hey yeah uh, what is the difference between lfp battery and uh, and the and nmc battery or the the cobalt based batteries and i was like well um and i started explaining you know so wait can we turn right because it seems like it's kind of hard to turn right now because of the traffic is quite massive traffic here yeah but so uh where do we start lfp it, it's uh, like this car has it means uh, lithium iron phosphate it doesn't have cobalt in it and then the uh, the one with the bigger battery the one the one the in Europe you get a 64 kilowatt hour um, mg4 that one has cobalt in it okay let's go sorry I had to focus on driving just hammer this guy okay and then cobalt is like it's like the steroids for batteries cobalt will boost its uh, its properties to make it better for example when the when batteries are cold typically uh, they will perform worse they will have limited power output uh, in order to not damage the battery and also they will charge slower but then when you add cobalt to the battery it makes it better it can then charge faster or discharge more and then LFP since it doesn't have cobalt it will also kind of suffer from it so LFP batteries kinda, they actually and if LFP batteries will perform best if they are heated up and in Thailand LFP battery makes perfect sense in Thailand because uh, it's in general fairly warm over here so I've noticed in uh, car scan or uh, test uh, scan my Tesla that uh, during a typical drive in Thailand uh, the battery will actually stay at around uh, uh, 30 to almost 50 degrees Celsius yeah but that was Tesla Tesla might feed the battery yeah I think Tesla is actually feeding the battery with heat from from the motors so heat scavenging some kind of alien technology some advanced shit yeah and then leaf well leaf goes to 56 degrees Celsius <laughs> well that's a different story uh, but okay so that's at least the differences there and then uh, and then NMC batteries uh they oh no, 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 so and then NC, ncm ncm batteries i think it's nickel uh cobalt uh manganese i think that's the one that one uh it, it's uh, it's more energy dense so that's the that's you know that that's why the bigger battery is the the, the cobalt battery because it's it has higher watt hour per uh, kilogram uh, so uh, you will find a high capacity uh uh, cars to have uh, cobalt batteries for natural reasons but yeah also I think it was weight yeah we do have volume versus weight also so uh, the, the the cobalt batteries are uh, in general you know, smaller and lighter which is very crucial for uh, cars like EVs but on the other hand if you don't need that much capacity and nowadays you the batteries are getting better and better so in this battery here 51 kilowatt hour and the car weighs 1750 kilograms it's actually not that bad you know and you can still get uh, over 300 kilometers of range on this car so and it could have been better if the car was more efficient even but yeah and then uh, another thing is that the cobalt batteries they are more expensive uh, than the LFP batteries uh, in in terms of kilowatt hour or you know what hour so, so 
And that's probably why Chinese car manufacturers they start using more and more uh, LFP batteries because they are affordable. And you know, the low the low range cars like this one is going to then be cheaper. Uh, another difference is that the NMC battery, you know, you heard it like, oh, batteries are dangerous. Once it catches fire, you cannot extinguish it, which is kind of true. Uh, and then if the battery gets too hot, you get the thermal runway. And if you puncture the battery, it will just catch fire and uh, yeah, uh, burn in a very uh, scary way. Uh, that's, that's for the cobalt batteries. But LFP batteries, they are way, way, way safer. I think I haven't tried it myself, but I think you can you can actually puncture the battery and it will still not catch fire, you know And I don't know how many degrees Celsius it can actually take uh, Without that catching fire. So LFP way way safer uh, Another thing is that um, uh, You know batteries they have a voltage and then when you discharge the battery the voltage will drop and then when you charge it up the voltage will go up I don't remember exactly uh, yeah and, and the cobalt batteries they come in very many different variants like the, like in the in this car you have the the NCA no and NCM but then Tesla uses NCA which is the A is aluminium instead of uh, manganese right and then I don't remember other uh, variants again uh, but um, Wait, what was my point again? Yeah, voltage, voltage. So, so typically one cell is uh, nominal voltage is 3.7. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, 3.7 volt. But when you discharge it to low, I think you can discharge it as low as 2.5 volt. Uh, maybe it's not recommended, but yeah, uh, roughly there, right? And then when you charge it up to maximum, it's uh, 4.2 volt, roughly. Uh, but uh, yeah, it also depends on chemistry and all that and then how you mix the chemistry, but roughly there. But the LFP batteries, the voltage range is way, way narrower. So when you discharge the battery to almost zero, right? It's, I don't remember how much it is, but it's, it's way, way narrow, narrower um, voltage span. And that actually makes it slightly harder to estimate how many percent the battery is at and then and also how to calibrate everything uh, right uh, because um, I mean how how can how can the cars tell you that you have like now 43% battery well it looks at the voltage to figure out how much it has so um, that's probably why uh, maybe some car manufacturers they don't want to use LFP batteries because it's, it's harder to to figure out how many percent you have but then for for some some devices uh, let's say uh, uh, a lamp or something right or something not critical then it's not too important that we we get very accurate uh, reading you can just say well it's roughly 70 percent roughly 80 percent no big deal right but for a car you kind of need to have very accurate uh, 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 measurement on how much energy or battery you have left okay what else differences uh, well so the cobalt batteries they contain cobalt <laughs> and the cobalt comes mainly from uh, Congo wait shit what the, what's up with the traffic over here man uh, and then Congo is okay I don't know too much about it I just heard that the political situation in Congo is kind of unstable and and then uh, supposedly the 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 cobalt comes from the mines that it has been mined by uh, child slaves so if you want to criticize EVs for being bad you know you can just say well it's um, it's it's from you, you get raw yeah, like you you are, you are on your high horse in your EV thinking that you are saving the planet but the minerals for your EV comes from uh, the bare hands of a child slave in Africa which is a country right I'm just kidding what what dude this damn right lane huggers man dude can... oh man yeah these um these pickup trucks, by the way, I don't know if you can see it, but they have modified the suspension so that they can load way more than uh, the, the car's uh, original design is. Uh, but then it means that the car becomes very, very stiff and they then 
typically in Thailand, you, you have very shitty uh, or poor maintenance on the roads and then the, the left lane, which the trucks mainly hammer at, they, they are quite bumpy. So, the, so the, these kind of pickup trucks, uh, they, they then always hug the right lane. Yeah, and they don't give a shit. I, I also tend to hug the right lane because I don't want to ruin my rims. But if I see traffic coming from behind fast, I will just move over to the left lane, let them pass and then move over again. But these guys, they don't give a shit. Okay, anyway, um, but LFP battery has another nice property, which is that it has way, way better degradation. So when it comes to degradation, um, it's bad for the battery to be charged to 100% and it's bad for the battery to, to stay warm. And if you keep it, if you keep those two conditions, the longer you stay there, then the worse it is, meaning that you can, if you just briefly charge it 100% and then you start discharging it again, uh, and even if it's hot, no big deal. It's not that much, but if you leave it at 100% in Bangkok where it's hot and leave it there for days, then that's bad for the battery. But for the cobalt battery, for uh, LFP battery, LFP batteries, they can take the heat way better. And they also, they, they don't care too much if they are charged to 100%. So uh, typically uh, LFP batteries, they will have like two, three, four times higher cycle uh, lifetime than uh, cobalt batteries. So it's, it's simply amazing how uh, how uh, well uh, LFP, but you know, simply speaking of simply amazing, which is the Nissan slogan for the, the new, the branch banking new leaf that came out, the 40 kilowatt hour leaf, the leaf should have used LFP battery <laughs> since leaf doesn't have a, a thermal management, then they could actually just punish the battery. And even at 55 degrees Celsius, they could probably still take okay uh, charging rates with it. But I think the problem with leaf is that uh, maybe the energy density is too low. Okay, I need to overtake these slow pokes. Okay, so it's actually very common to kind of overtake with... Okay, let's go first. Achtung, Achtung! Coming through, coming through! Yeah, I mean, it looks dangerous, but it's, we have plenty of space here. And it's... Yeah, this, that guy... Also, when he blinks at me, Thai people, they just blink at you for any reason. Typically, in Norway, if you want to turn, you want to cross the road, right? You you want to take a, a left turn, right? And oncoming traffic is flashing at you a couple of times. It means go ahead, you know, I will wait for you. In Thailand, if they flash at you, it means stay there, don't move. I'm gonna go first. Yeah. <laughs> and also in Thailand, when you when you um, want to in, in like a like a like a queuing situation or, or like a zip merge, right? Or, or if you just uh, want to change lane and you want to get in front of someone, don't ever, ever, ever put on a turn signal and wait for, uh, for them to give you a slot. They will then accelerate like this and close the gap and block you from entering. Uh, yeah. So what you need to do is find out if you have enough space and then you just slide it in like a ninja. <laughs> Yeah, maybe blink once. Yeah, like a true BMW driver. Yeah, but okay, back to back to the LFP again. So, what else is it? Yeah. So, uh, but but okay. So I mentioned by the way, the LFP doesn't like the cold weather. It, it actually performs quite poorly. If if an LFP and a, a cobalt battery, they, they are both at 10 degrees Celsius, the LFP will have way lower discharge rate and way lower charging rate than a cobalt battery. Remember that I told you that cobalt is like the steroids for battery. It makes everything better. Uh, but well-designed cars like Tesla, they can overcome that problem because when you are driving, uh, you will have typically, you have leftover heat from the motor because the motor is not running at 100% efficiency. That would be simply amazing. Uh, so there will always be some leftover heat. And then with heat scavenging, you can then divert heat into uh, the battery instead. And that's what Tesla is doing. In the beginning, uh, lots of Tesla owners were complaining. That was many, many years ago. They were complaining that uh, the batteries, um, uh, the LFP batteries uh, were uh, like performing poorly in cold weather. But Tesla fixed that by actively heating up the battery 
and especially at low state of charge because that's also another condition when when you have low state of charge you can then not get the same power output as if you are at higher state of charge so tesla actively towards the end when the, the state of charge drops towards 10 percent uh, it will heat up the battery and keep it at higher temperature than when it's uh, higher state of charge so tesla is doing some smart engineering to overcome or mitigate the problem with the lfp batteries but then what about this mg ZSEV? ev when we drive it to yellow in winter and it's minus 10 degrees celsius will it then charge fast oh and another, another thing that tesla is doing and then more and more car manufacturers doing is that when you navigate to a fast charger the car will automatically preheat the battery heat it up uh, actively so that you can receive uh, faster charging speeds but uh, like cobalt batteries like uh, like uh, like the korean cars for example right uh, they don't need to be that hot to be able to uh, take uh, good charging rates i remember when i tested i think it was e nero which is cobalt based battery uh, even when the battery was only 10 degrees or 5 degrees celsius it was still taking over 50 kilowatt but lfp battery at those temperatures might take only 5 kilowatt you know but uh, what else is it uh, with LFP versus um, cobalt batteries? Hmm. Yeah, I think I, I cover most of it. So um, yeah, I find it in interesting. Uh, and also, which type do I like the most? Well, actually, I, I like LFP better and better. Because, okay, I mentioned that the, the energy density is not that great for LFP battery. But, you know, a battery pack consists of maybe hundreds or maybe thousands of, of smaller cells and then each cell uh, is then packed together uh, arranged in some kind of array and then uh, maybe put in parallel put in serial to get the the uh, oh look at that <laughs> that was uh, attraction control kicking in but so you got have higher voltage and, and then higher capacity but then they also have to bundle it in modules and all that packaging and all that uh, stuff actually adds some overhead and the effective energy density then becomes lower so tesla is doing something smart they're making the fat cells which is bigger bigger cells with bit more volume and then you have lower waste of material in between right and stuff like that packaging and therefore uh i think that tesla is trying to reduce or actually eventually eliminate the use of cobalt and they have to figure out something so they're doing that one to to still have a high okay i might have to talk to that guy by the way he's gonna ask me where do you go okay. all right yeah there, there are plenty of these police checkpoints they are looking for illegal immigrants from uh, burma or from myanmar Okay, I need to overtake that truck because he's not going very fast. Um, so I'm gonna do the, uh, like a Thai, Thai style, um, which is to hammer it on the continuous line. I, I know it's not legal, but it, everyone in the mother is doing it. You know, like, like, like Germans, they go uh, 20 kilometers per hour over the speed limit. Yeah, because everyone is doing it. <laughs> no, but, um, but also Tes Tesla is not the only car manufacturing, uh, car, car manufacturer uh, doing something smart uh, with the battery packs. Uh, BYD with the blade batteries. Oh, look at that! Look at that uh, body roll. <laughs> no, but BYD, they also have the blade batteries. You know, uh, so typically, if it's a pouch cell or um, or uh, a prismatic cell, each cell. Well, I have to focus here a little bit. Okay, let me go. I'm just going to do it bare legal here. Okay, okay. Forgive me, Father. I have sinned. I have hammered. Okay, but. Um, like like a like a power cell is roughly the the size of my palm. You could we could have called it a palm cell almost. So think about this: a car battery is huge, so it needs to consist of many of these power cells. But BYD they made the blade battery, and then instead of having smaller cells, they have a huge, long, very long uh, LFP cell. Uh, I think it's like uh, one meter long. That's why they call it the blade battery, right? And by doing that, they also reduce the waste material in between and so on. And they talk about cell to pack. 
uh, wait, I'm not sure if that was the BYD or whatever. But the, instead of having modules, several modules, they just have like the cell right into that consists that goes that becomes a, a battery pack without having to have more segmentation. And that means that the effective um, uh, energy density on an LFE battery will be higher by designing the battery pack smarter. So even though the LFP has low energy density, it doesn't have to be that bad, really. So that, that's actually very, uh, very good because, in my opinion, we should actually try to avoid using um, cobalt in the batteries, right? <laughs> Unless there is a way to find cobalt somewhere, like from an asteroid or some shit. Yeah, but okay, so I think I covered uh, most of it now. The differences between um, LFP and NCM and well, okay, one more, one more thing I can say is that for cars then yeah uh, LFP batteries they have the disadvantages because they are kind of heavy and all that but there are places where uh, LFP battery wouldn't matter too much for example if you have local storage like some kind of in a, in a solar uh, uh, PV system when it's stationary on the ground in a house or in a, in a in an industrial building, then you don't care how heavy or big it is. So there, LFP would make perfect sense because it has a perfect, a, a really great uh, lifetime and everything, right? So, um, uh, but I guess if you want the big, the best range, then you still have to go for NTM. Or, I mean, or, or the, I mean the the cobalt uh, batteries. But I'm actually liking LFP more and more now. So, um, yeah. And then I want to ask you guys which uh, battery type is your favorite. Hmm? Okay, anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.